Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Chris, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you tuning in. Here is the topic for today's video. Here are a couple of signs I made. It turned out pretty good. Um, we're gonna talk about whether to earn cold hard cash for these jobs, or can you barter? Basically, a barter is a trade of service, a trade of goods that may be worth more to you than actually cash in hand. And in this case, I was able to do that. I'll explain more about that later. Let's build these signs and let's talk about this. Let's go. Now, I could take some of this African Ipe here and just join the blocks together that I got and make a sign out of that. It would be really heavy, it would be really dense, and it probably wouldn't be the best use of this really nice hardwood. So, we're gonna stretch it a little bit. And what I mean by that is we're gonna cut it down into quarter inch strips on the table saw here, and we're gonna use these strips to our advantage, the aesthetic of them to our advantage here, and I'll show you how that's gonna go. Now, once you get everything cut here, I'm gonna cut these down to four specific lengths. I got my table saw sled set up here with a stop block and various systems to go ahead and make sure these cuts are going to be repeatable and accurate over time. So once that's done, I'm going to take some of those pieces and actually rip them to three quarters of an inch here on the table saw, being sure to be very careful here. I could take, this is I guess eight quarter stock, and rip it down twice to give me these long strips that I'm then going to take and then pin nail with glue to the edge of this three quarter inch plywood. So you might be asking yourself, Chris, what in the world, man? You always use plywood. You finally got your hands on some African Ipe, and now you're still using it. What is going on? Well, I don't have that much of it, okay? I got a good amount, but I want to save it and stretch it as best I can. Doing that, well, plywood's going to help me. I'm going to be able to clad the surface, like you see me doing this edge banding here, and then we're going to build the sign on top of the plywood, and nobody will be none the wiser once we're doing this, okay? So unless you've seen this video and you see the backer board here. But here's this repeating pattern that I'm talking about. I use a long, I guess this is about an 18 inch piece, followed up by a 10 inch piece, by a four inch piece, and then by an inch and a half. And then I repeat that all the way down the line, except I do it in a, the next piece order. Basically, if I started with 18 and I make a line, the next line up, I start with a 10 and go in that same order. The next line up, I use a four inch piece and go in that same order. It ends up being kind of a cool effect. It's random, yet it's organized all at the same time. And I'm using popsicle sticks to kind of give me this nice spacer, which is then gonna be flooded with, you guessed it, a little bit of resin. At this point, I'm gonna use some stucco tape to wrap the perimeter up, and I'm gonna extend the stucco tape about a quarter of an inch above the surface, giving me kind of a recess where this resin won't spill over the edge. So I'm using Total Boat's 2 to 1 high performance resin here. It's one of my favorite resins. I use it quite a bit. It's a great all around resin for the shop, especially when you want to do a project like this. I'm going to use their white dispersion as well, which is going to make this thing completely non-see through. I want this to be opaque as possible, which is what I'm going for. And the dispersion is great. You only need just a little bit of it to give you that effect. Of course, when you're mixing resin, it's always a good idea to transfer containers from the one you originally mixed in to a fresh one. Give it a good stir again for a few more minutes, and then you're good to go. So once your resin's prepped and ready to go, I like to put it down and just kind of nestle it in there with a scraper or a squeegee, making sure I get all the nooks, crannies. You don't want to leave anything unturned here or unnoticed because you don't want to go back and have to fill these cracks again. Once, and then you're good. Once it's cured, it takes about maybe half a day. In this point, I think I was able to do this in one day. Take the tape off, and you've got a little bit of sanding to do. And of course, I've got a CNC, so I'm gonna try a leveling bit because, you know, this will take about 10, 20 minutes to do, but why not? Let's just go try it on the CNC. And disaster. Yeah, look at that. I had a bit that I had no clue was as dull as a toothbrush, and it burned, ugh, it burned the surface so bad. So I've switched to a little bit well, I guess smaller bit. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it cleaned it up better. It was a nice surfacing bit. It's about an inch long or an inch in diameter, and that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and take it back and, and sand it just to its final, uh, final grip. But you can see here, I used the blue tape and CA glue method, of course, and that worked pretty well for the CNC. I usually just use hold downs, but I, I forgot about this on the CNC, and it worked really well. As you can see, after a little light sanding now to 220, we're looking good. And after a few minutes with the V-Groove 60 degree bit, look what we got here. We got a nice logo done. I actually like this logo. This is a company called Planked Woodworking here in Jacksonville, Florida. And this sign is for them. 
And at the time I made it, they didn't have a CNC. And guess what? They do now. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So here's the deal. I want to inlay some black resin in this, but don't forget this step. You want to do a nice, even coat of some type of penetrating epoxy or two-part resin to make sure you seal it. You have to seal this before you do your color. If you don't, you're going to have air bubbles popping through. It's just not a good thing. You want this to be as crisp as possible. Sealing the wood is key. Again, now I'm just using the black dispersion and I'm flooding this just so. Making sure to get all in those little areas where the font is. You don't want to leave any stone unturned here. Again, you don't want to come back and do two pours. You want to make sure you just take your time and you get everything covered. And once that's cured, I learned my lesson with that first flattening bit. I'm going to use the, the proper one this time as well. And we're going to take that flood coat off here at the CNC. Again, you can do this by hand or you can do it with a drum sander. You can do it with a belt sander, whatever you got. I just happen to have this tool in the shop, so I'm going to use it. And then a light sanding running through the grits here from 120 up to 180. This looks pretty good. And of course, I like to do a nice little hand chamfer with the sander. Been doing this for a lot of years. Never really break out the palm router for this. I always do it by hand. And I think it looks pretty sharp. Tell me what you think. And of course, I want to thank Total Boat for helping me make this video, supplying the goods that are really helping me get a professional finish on this. Not only is the resin awesome, but their wood sealer is something I use before I always finish my projects. Definitely, definitely check them out. Links are down below for everything Total Boat. Now, a technique I've never tried, and let's hope it works. So this next sign is just plywood. I was gonna use laminate, but I didn't have any, nor did my dealer. So I'm taking some black gel stain, and we're gonna flood the surface of a piece of half inch plywood. Then I'm gonna use that same sealer and I'm gonna flood a coat of sealer on here because it's gonna go onto the CNC with a V-bit. If you've ever used plywood with a V-bit, you know things can get a little bit fuzzy and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna seal the wood first really well and then cut it. And of course, for whatever reason, I cut it and I had the camera set up and did not hit record. So <laughs> there's the result. It actually turned out really great. We're gonna flood another coat of black gel stain on it just to be safe. And then we're gonna mix up some more of this white dispersion, but this time we gotta be a little bit more careful. That's why those bottles are here. So I'm gonna use some of the white dispersion in the two part resin again. We're gonna mix this up and I've got a few, I guess these are condiment bottles or little restaurant style bottles. We're gonna pour some in here because I've gotta do some fine intricate work. Now it's fine if you want to go ahead and just pour some of this resin into an open space. That's great when the space is as big as say this C here, that's fine. I do not want this resin getting on the surface of the wood. In fact, when you're making a sign like this, your recesses are going to be filled with resin and they're not going to be filled all the way. You want the meniscus to be concave. You want the resin to be lower than the surface. All right, so that's the deal. And I realize that this tip really isn't as fine as I need it. So I'm using one of Starbond CA glue tips and we're going to go ahead and CA glue this thing here. And I hope that tip doesn't come off when I'm working with it. It's a little foreshadowing, by the way, <laughs> but it does work really well. I probably should have used tape. Yeah, you'll see. But look here, look at the detail we're getting. It does a fantastic job with this resin. And again, like I said, you don't want to fill this all the way. You want this to be just under the surface, which gives you a pretty nice look. And quite frankly, filling up these vertebrae was probably the most satisfying of the project, most satisfying experience, uh, seeing this thing come to life. Every once in a while, you want to use a toothpick and kind of nestle that resin into the corners. It will self-level itself in there and it will do fine, but I like to kind of speed up the process just a little bit to make sure I got enough in there. Look how cool this is. And then the last step is to go ahead and just put a, well, a border around it and look what happened. <laughs> the tip came off, couldn't believe it. So here's how you clean it up. Every time I work with resin, I have some denatured alcohol on hand. That is the key. You don't, oh. I swear, I, you know what? I dodged so many bullets on this video. It's so crazy. But either way, we wiped it up, cleaned it up nice, and here it is. Final result. We're going to put this thing in there really slowly, and it worked out really well. Now, for finishing, 
Well, I love this. This is Halcyon Clear again by Total Boat. I'm going to use the clear to build up a few coats, and then my last one will be with a matte finish, and it's going to be beautiful. I like to set a timer when I do this for every hour. You can put these coats on every hour, and I'm doing three coats of gloss and then one coat of matte, and I'm going to show you guys an effect that this has. You want to put this on probably a little heavier than you might think. Okay, so after you see me spraying this here with my HVLP system, I'm going to show you what it looks like. You're going to think, oh no, I ruined it. It's a bunch of orange peel. Not the case. Halcyon is like magic. Within about 20 minutes, it will self-level itself, kind of like a resin will, and will become glass smooth. No joke. Okay, no joke. It's amazing stuff. Again, links are down below, and I think it turned out beautiful. Check this out. Here it is, still wet. This is the matte finish on the last coat, and it's actually still wet, and it has that orange peel effect. But after about an hour or two, look at that. Holy mackerel, it looks so satiny and shimmery. Love the effect. It is gorgeous. Woohoo! All right, with the finish done, of course we need to protect it. Now time to put the LEDs along the back of this sign. I need to raise the sign off the wall, and instead of cutting these out in one big piece, I decided to save some wood, cut them out into individual sections that then dovetail together. You can see the look of it here. You might think, well, that's a little bit extra work, but I didn't have that much material on hand at the time, so cutting them in sections allowed me to get more yield out of the material. And actually, it was pretty fun to build this way, too. So I've cut some spacer blocks and some little dovetail joints there you can see. And then we're going to attach each of these quadrants to the first layer with some really small half inch screws. Of course, lots of glue. I didn't have brads or pin nails that were short enough for me to feel confident enough to install the first layer with those because I thought they would just blow through the front of the sign. And that's not what we want. So after the first layer is done with the screws, we go back and layer up all the other layers with a pin nailer that has three quarter inch screws or three quarter inch brads or pins. And that worked really well. Once we're finished with that, now it's moving on to the LEDs. These are just a, I don't know, this is a cheap kit from Amazon, and uh, it works really well, actually. I hooked it up, making sure the infrared reader faces downwards so the, so the remote can actually, you know, do its job. And everything looks like it's going to work out pretty well. Everything is self-adhesived as well. So once you got the power supply in where you need it, you can start taking the self-adhesive back off of the LEDs and start wrapping it around whatever application you're doing. In this case, it's a sign. And I did a double layer of these along the back to make sure you could see it, even in broad daylight. And they were bright enough to do so, and I'll give you an example of that when it's finished. But this process went pretty easily. LEDs are just great. They add a nice touch to really any sign, to tell you the truth. So once the LEDs are installed, it's now time just to give it a good test here in the workshop. Looks really good. I think it's bright enough. I hope it does well in the office, especially with the sunlight and the lights being on. Now, as for the other sign, well, it's for a woodworker. He can hang it himself as far as I'm concerned. Turned out good. Thanks, Mike. And here it is. Here's the chiropractic sign installed, ready to go. Not going to show the office too much. Just going to show you the sign here. And thank you. Really appreciate the opportunity. Turned out great. Okay, so here are the results. What I ended up doing was quoting him $250 for that sign. Now, I know that seems like it's probably not that much money for what I did. I've known him a lot of years. He's been my wife's chiropractor for a while. I used to help him and whatever else when he was coming into the store when I was a bakery manager for all those years. So uh, I consider him a friend and he got kind of the friends and family discount. So, but I asked him, I said, look, it's a, the topic I want to talk about in the video is, is are you up for bartering? You're a business, you're a service. Would you be willing to basically give me more in services cash wise than you were willing to pay for the item? He said, absolutely. So we got almost $500 worth of service in the next, whoever knows. I mean, it's just indefinite. They're on the chart. They're ready to go there at the chiropractor. So if my wife does need to go, those services will be taken care of. So it was actually worth it at this point. And the other sign, well, I made for Mike at Planks Woodworking. Look at this. Look at how much. Check this out. This is what he gave me. Um, these are off cuts. These, I know, off cuts are three or four feet in length at eight quarter stock. 
This is really high value wood here. There's alder, there's, there's African mahogany, there's ipe, there's, which might be the same thing. Um, <laughs> there's uh, a walnut, really great stuff. He does some amazing work. He does some really big projects and sometimes his four foot pieces he really doesn't have a use for. So he gave them to me. So I figured I would just pay it forward. So there was no goods in exchange there. It was just kind of an act of kindness on both of our parts. So hope this video has brought the light that when you make things for people, especially if they have another goods or service that they can offer, have that conversation, you know, definitely have that conversation with them and, and see if you can provide something that they just wouldn't think of versus giving you cash in hand, right? Cash in hand is great, but I could use $500 worth of chiropractic care over the next few months, more so than I could use $250 right now. Okay, so that was the topic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me for this one. Hope you like what we did here. These signs turned out great. And uh, I'm gonna put links below if you're in Jacksonville, Florida, and you wanna get any type of woodworking. Why am I, why am I outsourcing woodworking to somebody else? Why? Because he just his skill set is way bigger than mine. So if you have any big projects you wanna get done, whether they're, I don't know, escape room doors, mahogany bathtubs. He's done quite a bit. Um, I'll, I'll definitely put a link down there for you. Uh, and if you need any chiropractic care in the Jacksonville area, thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. And again, Total Boat, thank you for the supplies. I really appreciate it. Your products are great and everything's linked down below. You guys are awesome. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on that next build video. Until then, see you.